the present and the future of aviation explained in fly in partnership with Eurocontrol. Buongiorno, my name is Claudia D'Amico and I am a traffic controller and mastery upper area control center. KLM 1822, descent fly level 260. Today I'm going to show you how the training and the whole career of an air traffic controller is focused on safety. If you look in the back of one of those red corners on there, it's the accessible. The traffic controllers are highly qualified professionals and our training takes anything between two and a half and three years. We start with a thorough selection process actually and then the successful candidates will start training in Luxembourg and they will study subjects like navigation, aerodynamics, meteorology and air traffic. Then they will follow basic radar course and if successful after all that they will come to Maastricht. In Maastricht there will be a period again of classroom and lectures followed by simulation like here. After that you will actually go to the operations room and there you will start your on-the-job training. The on-the-job training will last anything between 10 and 15 months. Every year we have to take a medical examination and uh, things like uh, earring and vision and blood pressure are checked but also we have random checks for psychoactive uh, substances such as alcohol and drugs. It goes without saying that safety is top priority for air traffic controllers. As skies grow increasingly crowded, so grows the responsibility on their shoulders. One case they study is a collision which happened on July the 1st, 2002, over Übelingen in Germany. A Bashkirian Airlines Tupolev 154 passenger plane flying from Moscow to Barcelona and a DHL Boeing 757 cargo jet en route from Bergamo to Brussels found themselves at the same altitude. The jet's onboard radar worked, telling the Boeing pilot to descend and the Tupolev pilot to climb. But Swiss air traffic control sent the opposite instruction to the Russian plane. Both aircraft descended and collided. This is how controllers react to similar situations using current technology and the new tools that Eurocontrol is bringing in. So here we're simulating a conflicted situation whereby two aircraft are in conflicting course. One is the KLM 440 and the Air Finland 141 Foxtrot. They're both at the same altitude, 36,000 feet. And uh, if nothing is done, they will uh, come far too close for comfort, let's say. The traffic controllers will normally see conflicting situations well in advance and act upon it. But if that doesn't happen, as human error is always possible, the computer assists us with a system called STCA, short-term conflict alert. The STCA will uh, predict the position of the aircraft in the next two minutes. And if uh, it finds that there is conflicting traffic ahead, will give us a visual warning, like you can see right now. KLM 440, turn right immediately, two zero degrees. Airfield Finland 141 Foxer, turn right immediately, two zero degrees. A new safety improvement uh, which will be implemented in the next few months is uh, MTCD, the medium term conflict detection which works pretty much like the system we looked at earlier, the STCA. But uh, this tool will actually detect conflicts up to 30 minutes in advance. And also we'll look at uh, the vertical profile for planned flight level, planned altitude. So in this case, we have this flight, Ryanair 8405, which is in my sector. And the system detects this flight will be in conflict in 12 minutes with the November 128 Alpha Bravo, which is not even on my radar screen. But safety issues are not only airborne, where collisions are thankfully extremely rare. They also exist on the ground. Amsterdam Schiphol, ranked fourth busiest in the world for passenger numbers, six runways spread over 87 square kilometers, the equivalent of 6,000 football fields. Like aircraft, cars on the ground are equipped with an electronic transponder. It means vehicles appear on control tower radar screens along with the planes. Amsterdam is one of the first European airports to introduce such a system. The vital part played by ground control was highlighted by an accident on October the 8th, 2001 at Milan's Linata Airport.
A Cessna Citation executive jet took the wrong taxiway. It turned onto the active runway and collided with an SAS MD-87 passenger jet, which was taking off. The MD-87 never got off the ground and ended its run exploding in a baggage handling building. In Amsterdam, like many other airports, a runway safety team deals with safety issues on the ground. We do a lot of things at the Schiphol Airport to improve the runway safety. Um, we um, established a runway safety team in 2004 and we adopted the European Action Plan for the prevention of uh, runway incursions. We took a lot of measures with uh, all the parties uh, working on, uh, on the airport, uh, KLM, but also uh, ATC. We did some uh, infrastructural things, but also um, uh, procedures, uh, communications. Dutch ATC has a control tower simulator at Schiphol, where controllers can experience both normal and emergency situations. What we're demonstrating here is the runway incursion alert system, Schiphol or RIAS for short. It's a tool that helps us notice when a runway incursion is occurring at any of the runways that we're using at a given time. You will see a scenario with a car uh, situated here waiting to cross the runway and an aircraft coming to land on that same runway. For some reason in the scenario, the aircraft is uh, on very short final with the car still on the runway and that's when you see the uh, system trigger the alert. So this would give the controller time to either issue a missed approach instruction to the aircraft on short final or to ask the car to really, really expedite and vacate the runway. But maintaining safety standards also means laying down the rules and procedures. And that's the job of Eurocontrol, the European Organization for Safety in Air Navigation. There are regulations such as the ones that govern the competencies of air traffic controllers through a European licensing system which ensures highly competent uh, and highly qualified staff in our area control centers, approach units and on the control towers. Now what are the challenges for the future? There is a need to deliver the required ATM capacity to meet the demand of air traffic in the future. We have therefore to focus on improvements in safety management to ensure increased safety. We have to enable safety culture implementation and safety reporting system which is confident enough in order to improve safety. European aviation safety standards are among the highest in the world and officials are striving to ensure that what goes up will come down safely. <laughs>